So um, I guess before I start, um, I wanted to talk a little bit about myself, but then also about the term future for I mean, So yes, as you said, I managed the design team within TFL Online. That's the digital design team. So there's a corporate design team as well that we work very closely with. Um, but in terms of digital design, we're the only ones within TFL who actually sort of own the digital experience, if you will. Um, that's quite important because often um, what you find is fragmentation across design teams as well. And so we've been working very hard to consolidate that and to kind of build one team that owns that. Um, I started about a year ago and I since have um, co-shaped, if you will, what that team looks like, how that team works, how in general we, we kind of design experiences and, and the approach we take, so um, <clears throat> how strategic we are, how how hands-on we are, how we interact with others and so on. If you are keen to follow me, you can, but I think more importantly, um, Transport for London and Medium, so we do have a, a blog, obviously, for many years already, it has a lot of followers, but uh, we are going to post a lot more going forward, so <clears throat> maybe a good idea to sign up that if you haven't. So that's me. Uh, oh yeah, back to future proof. So I thought this term future proof, there's something about it. I have been using it for a year now, and I have never explained it to anyone. Which nobody has questioned me. Which is <laughs> <laughs> quite good. So I keep using it in presentations and I kind of like it, but I also think it's probably a bit sort of yes, funny terms. But I thought about it last night and I thought, where does this come from? Why am I so worried about future-proofing anything, really? What is it? Waterproof, bulletproof, what is it? What are we future-proofing? Um, but I think over the years, so I have de I've led numerous design teams by now, for many, many years. And I guess what I did find difficult, and it has informed the way that we are now designing uh, experiences at TFL, is this organizational structure, as I think many of you probably know, we are all sort of interested in culture change and culture change and organizational change and so on. And I do find that still very difficult because these structures are very, um, how can I say, um, very um, limiting on one hand, but also when they do change, quite destructive. <laughs> so, so future proofing, I think, is about Yes, becoming sort of nimble and agile and all those things, but also just generally um, finding ways of working with each other that sit outside of those organizational structures. So yes, collaboration, all of that, but something else, something more. And I've been working a lot on that. I'll talk about it. Um, so what has been going on in TFL? I guess, like everywhere nowadays, it's kind of moved from, okay, we need a website. <laughs> oh, we have suddenly a hundred websites or a thousand websites, and now we need to sort of consolidate. And that has happened at TFL. The website has won many, many awards. Um, it was one of the, it's still one of the kind of most innovative websites for transport authorities in the world, and so on and so on. Um, it's responsive. It was really, really quite, quite good. Um, and what it did was, it, it did, similar to the GDS, it sort of consolidated all these different websites into one um, and made that experience really well. And what has happened since then is, of course, everything else that happened in digital and the fact that we do need to look at the overall experience across all these different channels. So we have since started to look at, so we have kind of incorporated into the team that looked after the website, social media, sort of, started to look at displays and stations, started to look at how we work with third party uh, partners, how we sort of um, in, kind of kind of affect what we do with the, with the data, with the API that we have, the open data API. Um, uh, looking at emerging technologies as well and emerging digital touch points. And so it's become really much larger and what we now are looking at is this multi-channel multi digital service um, Approach. And I, I think that resembles very much uh, what many, many teams have gone through over the last one or two years. Um, so what we did about yeah, one year ago, I think, when I started, we, we decided a few things. We decided a few things. And I think it's quite important. We decided <clears throat> not to be uh, a design team in the sense that we decided not to 
be a service team. We decided not to just provide services to the business, uh, which is how it worked until then. So until then, what happened was the business, the stakeholders would have a brief and they would come to the design team and ask for designers to deliver that, that brief. Um, and we decided not to do that. We decided to instead um, use service design and a strategic design approach to own the experience and to become strategic partners for the organization and the business. Um, and we have been communicating that quite strongly. We have been working with stakeholders quite broadly. And for that, we have created a space. So we created the studio space within, within TFL. It's 55 Broadway. Very um, impressive building if you've ever been in it. It's very old. First skyscraper in London. <laughs> and um, so we have a whole wing there. We created the space uh, to get people in and to facilitate um, that strategic conversation with the business. And, um, and we also created it, of course, like these spaces tend to be, to, to experiment, to run workshops of all kinds, of course, to, um, to kind of uh, create service prototypes. So we kind of we do that quite a bit here. This is Cycle Hire, do quite a bit of that recently. Um, and just generally have a space where you can work with, with all these different parts of the organization. And that has proven to be extremely successful, I think, in the sense that people now come to us and they want that from us. They want to work with us and they want to have our input and they want us to help them with their strategies and they want us to generally maybe take on the strategy uh, for different business areas and so on. So, so it's been really working quite well for us. <coughs> um, yeah, a lot of this. This is the team, part of the team. Um, looking at maps, <laughs> working with maps. Um, we also use the space to collaborate with academia. So you've been working with us with RCA. Some of you are on here. And um, that's another part of what we do. So we kind of started to generally sort of reach out and work with other people as well. <coughs> and that's also. Just, just a great side note. We have our own high line. Anyway, so yeah, I had to wipe everything out because uh, I can't actually share any of this. But um, I wanted to share the fact that we think ahead many, many years. Um, and yeah, and this is facilitated by design. So what we get in is we got the FAST team in and we ran many, many workshops with them, and we help them to define their essentially their strategy in general, but also especially how to influence the digital experience of that, or the experience in general, over the next uh, 10, 10, 15 years. So, so that's the type of work we do a lot, and we visualize that, we put it on the wall, we share it, and, and so on, and, and, and we really work closely with them. And that's why I show this. <coughs> so, Another key part of what we have been doing is redefining sort of um, how that strategic conversation has to happen and how we kind of combine strategy with delivery. So I mean, you're all aware of, I guess, Ben Terrence and Mike Brecken's statement of um, strategies delivery. Uh, and I tend to sort of like turn it upside down. I say, well, actually, delivery is also strategy. So it's, it's kind of both, isn't it? It's that. Um, Strategy really, you know, if you think of strategy as something that has been thought up up front and then kind of gets delivered, by the time it's delivered, it's usually outdated. So, so strategy in that old world sense doesn't work. So this idea of continuous delivery really is something that we adopted for strategy. So we think of strategy very much as something that's continuously created, co-created, <coughs> co-owned in a way, and that changes, you know, on an annual basis, sometimes quicker, sometimes slower, but it's something that constantly needs to be part of what we do. Um, equally so, we think of innovation the same way. So innovation is something that's deeply integrated into everything we do. So we do still in TFL have innovation teams, smaller ones, but we do, we have stated very clearly that we see innovation and continuous innovation in the same way as we see strategy as an integral part of what we do every day. So emerging technologies, any of that, 
we're looking at all the time. And we're also constantly experimenting with it. And we're trying to, to deliver things and, and co-design them with the public you know, as much as we can. And I think there will be a lot more coming your way in that sort of, uh, with that approach. <coughs> Um, <clears throat> so to do that, however, we needed to 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 kind of define how that would, would all work. So how you know how do you sort of uh, do this? How do you do strategy and <clears throat> innovation and all of that um, <clears throat> and delivery and so on? And so what we did was we kind of said, look, we really need an experience-led you know, product product approach. So we can't just have product managers going off and doing their thing. What we need to do is we need to create proper multidisciplinary teams, but not just on projects. We need multidisciplinary teams that stay with each other long term, that um, work together, build friendships together, think strategically, look for innovation opportunities, but all focused around an experience, a particular experience. So the goal is to form and shape a particular experience, and for that we need someone who, who's a product person, we need someone who is sort of a designer, those definitions are completely also hybrid, um, and we need someone who's highly technical, a technical architect or a lead developer or something. And that's the core team, and, the, and we have three of those at the moment. And those three then, yes, have designers attached, have developers attached, have, you know, we, we have agile teams attached to those and so on. And those teams are also part, and some of them are more core, and some of them are less core. Some things about these things for a very long time, ideally. And what it does is, it, you know, it saves costs, because we're, we've reduced sort of handovers between projects, we've reduced sort of knowledge transfer, all that stuff that needs to be done when you change people. You know, people actually, stop talking about the same things again and again and again because they get bored. So they start coming up with, they come up with new ideas and they try new things out and they, you know, it's, it, it's, it speeds up the whole design process. Um, we're having real, we've kind of developed real respect among, you know, across disciplines, I say. And I think there's you know, something that, I mean, that we all know that's been flying around for years, this idea of this T-shaped person. It's kind of like broad and kind deep as well, and some of them are very broad, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's all crazy. And so anyway, so what we, what we decided is to just drop all of that. And what we kind of, um, so we see everyone sort of as a hybrid, but most importantly is we really value expertise and we really value experts and people who do just one thing as well, and who come in and who really, really work together with others and who complement each other. And that way of working really seems to be quite effective, I think. And it's, it's um, yeah, well, we can discuss that afterwards. Um, so what we did was we said, okay, look, the experience, or experiences generally, are very sort of amorphous. When you think about experience, it's kind of this vague term, what is it really? Um, <clears throat> and um, we can't really think about it, you know, we can't really think about it in terms of channels, we can't really think about it in terms of sort of even usability, that's not enough, but we really need to think about it is sort of the fact that people have core things, that core needs, core needs from TFL, and they have core experiences with TFL, and they are made up of many, many aspects. Let's just define it as a very vague kind of broad concept. Uh, and this kind of illustrates it. So for example, we used to have, you know, kind of customer journeys, or journeys in general, that concept has been around at TFL for, for quite some time. Um, uh, but what we noticed was that planning and traveling sort of like merged because of, of all the new apps that came up and all the new digital tools that people have. So sort of we couldn't really think of stages even anymore. Even that was kind of outdated by the time that we kind of came in because of people plan and travel and do that all at the same time while they probably shop as well or, you know. So that sort of convergence of everything <laughs> okay, is something that we stated quite clearly. And um, obviously, that's happening across, you know, uh, you know, with the help of many, many touch points, print, digital, all of that, organizations, PA announcements, <laughs> and um, environment, and so on and so on. So that's something we've been communicating. And then we said, okay, so but there are these core experiences, and uh, they are fairly standard. So there's kind of the discover experience or awareness or whatever you call it. So everything that has to do with marketing, with becoming aware of new products. 
you know, learning that there is a light tube and understanding how it works, you know, understanding how the cycle hierarchy works, and all of those things are becoming aware of things. And that experience itself is quite key to us. It's very, very important strategically, um, and it's one of the core experiences. Where that happens is to be designed. Um, planning travel is obvious, payments became a very important topic, and then also what we call sort of TFL ID, which is essentially this idea of an account experience as a relationship. And um, we built those teams around it. So each team has one of these core experiences. So we have a discover team, we have a plan and travel team, and we have a pay and ID team. And the reason why we have a pay and ID team is because we see payments moving into transactions in general and transaction perhaps uh, succeeding payments one. This is a very broad statement, maybe don't quote me. But I think, I think um, it's quite important and it shows kind of that we're thinking about even those experiences as something from, yes, there's something that's happening now and these experiences that are happening right now, but also what will happen to them in the future? How will people pay? How will people relate to us? Uh, I only have two minutes, so to give you some kind of idea so again, just to, to recap, we have teams who now are dedicated to those areas and who look at all the touch points, all the experiences, all the strategies that have to do with those core experiences. And working with stakeholders across the business to bring them together. Um, <clears throat> so what does that look like? So the Discover team, for example, works very closely with our marketing team, with our creative agencies, um, with anyone else in the business who needs to make sure that their service or their aspect of a service or their product or their whatever it is, aspect of the product, uh, uh, becomes discoverable, becomes findable, communicates well, makes sense, and so on and so on. Primarily through digital channels, but also in conjunction with, with print channels. Um, <clears throat> Uh, plan and travel, obviously, we're looking at maps of all kinds and how that future may look like, you know, what do we do with screens, with maps in the future. Um, there's a lot of work going on there. We have a long history, we're constantly sort of exploring that. Uh, there's a lot to talk about, um, you will see more of that. Um, so we are also looking at it very strategically, London is one of the one of the uh, 21 mega cities in the world. And I think that's just something on the side to note. Um, so when we talk about travel and planning, uh, what we're really talking about is managing demand, <coughs> and managing busyness in stations, uh, understanding um, how people connect to the suburbs of London. And London is growing massively uh, at a very, very fast rate. And we need to accommodate that complexity, that future complexity, and we need to have the right tools in place. And of course, through our open data, we do have you know, global major brands providing those services to a large extent through apps like Google, Google Apps and, and CityMap and all of those. Um, but we also need to understand what our role will be, <clears throat> because clearly we have played a strong role in this for a very long time. The tube map was revolutionary at its time, in the beginning of the 30s. It was the first time that people could kind of understand where the suburbs were <laughs> and whether they should actually move there. And suddenly they look kind of central. <laughs> yeah. So we're still having, we're seeing that same thing. And you may have seen the city map uh, a version of the Elizabeth line, I don't know. It's quite interesting when you have tools like that to, where you can play through what, uh, you know, what future travel may look like if a new line comes into place and so So we're thinking a lot about growth, we're thinking a lot about complexity, we're thinking about what it means to the city, what it means to the city in terms of our open data and us creating a market for app developers, but also for our place within it as a public service organization. And what role design could play for us, and this was just a quick illustration as to what the growth rate is. So by 2030, uh, this is sort of an overview of cities and, and how they will grow. I mean, it is really stunning um, across the world. Anyway, bottom line, as I mentioned, you know, busyness, all of those, sustainable travel, payments, what will happen, happen for us the next? Obviously, we have contact us, but then what happens to our relationship with customers? We don't have Oyster. Let's see. So that's, that, these are the questions we're asking ourselves. Uh, 
people tend, because we're public sector, they tend to get very angry with us because they rely on us. So um, it's that love-hate relationship that people have with the NHS as well. So it's, it's, it's managing that and understanding that and relating to that and understanding, you know, and, and through digital, we're much closer to people. Obviously, people can reach us via social media. They, they talk to us every day. So how do we respond? Who are we to them? Uh, what do we do with their data? All of those questions are now part of that, what that team does, what that pain ID team does. Um, how may we support people in the future, especially through digital tools? Um, all of this seems a bit outdated by now. I mean, not all of it. The cancel on board is actually quite good. <clears throat> I don't know if you've seen it, but it's a new patch. Um, yeah, that's it. Thank <laughs> you.